product, the new product that you, that you have coming or that is out now. Just yes. launched. Just launched it. That is what I'm like most excited to talk to you about. Um, because as we were talking about previously, you're kind of on this, this kick about synthetics and I, you know, it couldn't have come at a better time, um, because there is, there is an issue in pet food right now that the FDA has yet to acknowledge. Um, but there are thousands of pet parents who are complaining that their dogs and cats are getting very sick. Some are dying. Um, there are also humans that are getting sick. All of this presumed to be from pet food. And um, the FDA knows about it. <laughs> and trying to pinpoint what is causing it is like looking for a needle in a haystack. And specifically, Dr. Judy Morgan kind of took this on. She felt obligated to because of the number of pet parents with complaints because of the severity of the complaints. Um, and it, it would be a lot easier if the FDA would actually step up and do something about it. But in the lack, you know, in, in the, in the interim, hopefully it does happen, but at least in the interim, she's done a lot of testing to try to find out what it is. But unless you know what to test for, you're just throwing darts at who knows what, right? Like, um, so we don't really know what it is, but it is suspected to be some sort of dry ingredient that these pet food companies all get from the same place, which could be anything. And so um, synthetic ingredients have been kind of top the, the top of the list for potential issues with, with pet foods. Um, and again, we're seeing it in dogs and we're seeing it in cats. I don't think we're seeing it as much in cats because cats tend to eat more variety in their diet than dogs do. Um, I think people get dogs and they say, you know, they buy that, let's just say Purina Pro Plan off of the grocery store shelf and they never switch it up ever in their dog's life, which is a whole other story. And I want to scream and pull my hair out about that too. <laughs> but um what is it about synthetic ingredients that has you on this like learning kick and wanting to change things up? Well, it really was start, you know, there are lots of people I follow that I respect who started talking about it. And that just led me on this deep dive of uh, actually looking into the research. Like I never trust anybody for their health advice. Like I, I always just do my own research and I, I try to exhaust every study that's out there until I form my opinion. And that's really where, that's really how it began is that is I started seeing in all of these studies that, um, the comparing the synthetic version of, um, vitamin D is a really weird one. Like it doesn't make sense that like a synthetic version of vitamin D should be different than other forms, but it, it did show that, you know, it has different, uh, health outcomes in terms of heart disease. So there, you know, take the, the supplement. Um, another thing that I, I learned along the way that really was like an aha moment for me is I, when we were formulating our allergy and digestion toppers, um, we were deep diving into, we looked at, we basically put together a list of every holistic ingredient that's been purported to have health benefits by Eastern medicine or like ancient Greek medicine. And uh, we went through all of them and then we compared them to the NIH studies. And, and what we ended up finding is, you know, let, let's just start on a very basic one. Um, choline. Choline is, um, you know, a very common supplement for both humans and dogs. It's uh, primarily recommended to aid the liver. So uh, if we look at what is the, you know, and, and again, the, when we think of synthetic forms, like these are like chiseled out of a rock. Um, they're not like from natural sources. So uh, when, when we look at choline, um, what is the highest bioavailable natural source of choline? It's the liver. Uh, so like eating liver meat helps the liver in both humans and dogs. Um, then I, I looked at, okay, like CoQ10, CoQ10 highly recommended for heart health. Um, 
okay, so like, what, what's the highest source of CoQ10? Uh, and I, I discovered that it's a uh, chicken heart and duck heart. Um, beef mm. heart has a lot of it too. So it's heart, heart helps the heart. And so when we just feed, uh, all we really need to do instead of feeding these, uh, kind of like more man-made synthetic toppers or vitamins we we can actually just supplement more of that um you know troubled organ in the diet or if we're looking to prevent it we can just feed feed a dog that their whole life and then um the other problem with um you know you mentioned people uh, and my does purina pro plan have a cult-like following i do not get it but the i, I definitely i definitely know that Purina has trolls on Reddit that I am anytime we read you're on like you're on Reddit and um, someone talks about how bio uh, bioavailable the proteins are. I mean, it's just like nobody talks that way. That's how corporate pet food companies talk. Nobody else knows about that. So and bioavailability is great. It's just like um, kind of a talking point for uh, corporate dry kibble companies. So uh, it's like their only talking point and it's not even a good one uh because air drying is actually still more bioavailable than dry kibble but mm -hmm. uh, off of that topic you know people um will shop and and uh and you know grab a, a purina pro plan and they just keep feeding their dog that or it could be merrick or it could be honest kitchen and they we feed mm -hmm. our dogs the same protein not only day after day but year after year and um, it's no wonder why 15% of dogs are allergic to chicken. And now 15% of dogs are allergic to beef. So um, that's kind of weird, right? Yeah. You know, chicken, maybe it makes sense. It's not It's not necessarily like the biggest uh, protein that uh, wolves ate in their, in their ancestral diet. Beef is getting a lot closer. Um, and the fact that those stats are exactly the same uh, for the top two uh proteins everyone everyone moved from chicken to beef maybe over the last like 10 to 50, 10 to 20 years so uh now beef is just as common of an allergy so whereas people tend to be really afraid of chicken these poor chickens everyone everyone's singling them out saying that their dog shouldn't eat chicken because chicken's a um you know a high allergen protein it's 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 not that it, it's that we feed our dogs the same thing day after day after day and they build up a, an intolerance to it so mm -hmm. that's why a rotational diet is is so important that's the other thing that man i've gotten really onto that one and you know one of the, one of the big mistakes that um we made with perfect kibble is that we only had chicken and beef. So we, we only had the two highest allergen meats and, um, you know, in that, in that first version of perfect kibble, like the, the chicken recipe also had beef liver, which, which isn't a problem. And it's a small amount. I don't want to like scare people away from that, that nobody should be, but the, the, the real pro the real thing here is like, I, I spent, um, over a year talking to pet parents on my nutrition calls, sending them the perfect superfood, our new product, the perfect superfood recipe. And I, and it's all hypoallergenic meats. So I would ask people like, can your dog eat at least one of these recipes? And uh, believe it or not, early on, the answer was no. Um, so that gets to the other thing in perfect kibble. We try to keep those recipes really the same, try to keep it like very, um, you know, we just swapped out chicken and beef pretty much, and, and they were very much similar. But what I started uncovering is that um, so many dogs were allergic to either flaxseed or carrots. Carrots is always going to be the one that's like the weirdest to me. I just still can't believe that so many dogs are allergic to carrots. But I, I spoke to so many people, who and, and actually I was speaking to um, Jen Schisler, who is a uh, in my opinion, the top uh, dermatology expert for dogs. Um, she's also a veterinarian. Really, really amazing person too. And um, she, you know what? What she believes it is is actually like uh, uh, cross sensitivities. So, like if a dog is allergic to um, one type of food group, but then carrots, like the small amount of proteins that are in carrots, are molecularly similar enough to um, what the dog is actually allergic to it still causes a reaction so you know we you know after a year we really tried to make every recipe very different because i was super set on 
everyone should be able to find at least one recipe that's going to work for their dog. So two out of three recipes are monoprotein, like they're single protein. You know, if you're, you know, the wild caught fish and the low fat turkey. Um, the other thing about the low fat turkey is like, I've been speaking to so many pet parents whose dogs have pancreatitis. Um, this actually might be, I don't know if I'm like, uh, just like attracting the, the, a small sector of the market, but I, I get the sense that it's actually a growing problem. So that's a, that's another really challenge. Talk about fats. I mean, um, schnauzers in particular, but like small breed dogs are, um, pretty much most at risk for pancreatitis. So they're typically recommended low fat diets. And, uh, so we, I was really set on like all of our recipes are fairly low fat. The low fat Turkey one is very low fat. So we also wanted to, in every recipe, try to address a different type of dog, if that makes sense. So perfect kibble like that, the levels of Coco Mega super fats in that one are about 10 times higher than in, um, in our, um, in our perfect superfood recipes. Um, so that's going to be good for like dogs who have environmental allergies, or it's going to, uh, potentially help with like, uh, you know, really bad gut health issues. Um, you know, one of the things that's really beneficial about that level of coconut oil is that the lauric acid in it has a probiotic like effect. So, um, it's basically an antibacterial, uh, to, some extent a safe one, but it, it helped. So like when we talk about microbiome diversity, that first recipe was like completely formulated around these studies around microbiome diversity. And so there are two aspects to that statistic. And this is like anyone who's trying to understand how to fix their dog. Um, this is like something to look at.